Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is the second time I'm filming this video. The mic is on. I have put a tan on. I have put a bright orange shirt on. Just really rolling with this orange theme as we go into summer. It's just, uh, it's here to stay for a while at least. Guys, today I wanted to talk to you about my favorite makeup brushes, my top beauty tools, taking you through all my favorites that I use on a daily basis every time that I do my makeup. I have a lot of brushes in my collection, I do. But I'm a creature of habit, and I reach for the same brushes all the time in the days of travel, when I'm traveling, when I'm packing a makeup bag, I have a very small, I mean not small, like there's still a lot of brushes here, but there are very much the core pieces, br pieces of brushes. Wow, there's the core group of brushes that I use absolutely every day without fail, and these for me have been worth the splurge. There have been a lot of brushes that I've purchased over the years that have lasted me for many, many years, and I just wanted to give to you my top picks. These are my most used brushes, the brushes I use every day, and if you were looking to make an investment in a makeup brush, these are my top picks. This is the list that I would give you to be like, okay, here are my core brushes. If you're looking to buy brushes, look no further. Here's the list of my faves. Now, that being said, there are many, many very affordable brushes that exist in the world. I'll be sure to include a few of my favorite dupes in the description box down below for any of my favorite brushes here but guys this is my top brushes and I'm gonna show you I'm gonna apply my makeup with these brushes as we go along and chat through them for a second time today now let's apply some makeup and let's talk about some brushes. I'm going to list all of the products that I'm using in the description box down below. I'm going to lose my train of thought here if I try and mention the makeup that I'm applying. So be sure to open the description box if you wanna know what products I'm applying on my face. Let's start with the MAC 170 brush. I have mentioned this brush a million and one times on my channel. I've been using it for years. I have two of them. And this one in particular is the, the old gal. She has gotten so much use and love from me. I don't know, I'm always skeptical with these like more kabuki more dense style brushes i'm like how much bacteria is like in there i know that when i wash them i'm unable to get like deep inside the bristles it's like what's festering in here but listen i have used so many foundation brushes kabuki brushes so many different styles over the years and nothing nothing has come close to this one for me the mac 170 um, in this form, God, I hope they haven't, I hope they haven't updated it because it's so good. It's just so soft. The density of the bristles is perfect. It just so nicely blends out the foundation on the face. And to be honest, I kind of go through phases when it comes to applying my foundation. I like to use my fingers. I like to use a beauty blender and I like to use a brush. If I'm using a brush, it's the MAC 170 brush. And I used it the other day and I was like, wow, I honestly forgot how easy it was because I've been in such a beauty blender phase lately but if you can see it's just I, I don't have to do anything and it just does all of the blending work for me if I'm in a rush like that is so fast it's honestly amazing I've included it in so many giveaways in the past as well like it's just a brush that I wish that everyone could have the pleasure of trying and using in their lifetime like it's honestly beautiful that was like five seconds boom blended out the foundation it's so nice. This is also a brush that I happily use when blending out concealer. However, I do like something a little bit smaller just to get right in there in my inner corner. That's usually where I use the beauty blender or I'll honestly just use my fingers, but you absolutely can just use this brush. And it's like, it's like, it just blends so quickly. Did you see that? Like, I hope you're able to see this in action. I don't know what kind of sorcery magic this is, but it just blends it out so quickly and easily and efficiently. Like boop, 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 done, blended so fast. I would actually argue that this is faster than my beauty blender. Yeah, sometimes when I'm cleaning it, I'm just like, mm. if you guys have any tips on how you clean deep inside the center of these brushes, I'd love to hear from you. But yeah, it's just where it kind of fails for me is just right in here. Like I'm not able to get right into the inner corner. So I'll often just pat it out with my fingers or use a beauty sponge or I enter my next top brush. This is one of my top picks from the Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum Collections collab. This is the Katie Jane Hughes number eight brush. I love this shape. I love the shape. I love the size. And two of these brushes were included in the kit when I received it. I'd love to say it again. Thank you so much, Spectrum and Katie Jane Hughes for sending me the collection. This brush is such an amazing multitasking brush to me. It so beautifully blends out the concealer. Like it's the perfect size to just get right in there and do a lovely little blend. It's so soft and 
because of the shape you can use it for so many different things like i love to use this for concealer i love the way katie jane hughes uses it for concealer and i also use this when applying powder and sometimes it kind of depends like i'm not really fussy with my powder brushes like i literally take whatever big blending brush and just smack it all over my face but if i'm wanting to be a little bit more precise i'll either use a smaller eyeshadow brush or this shape is honestly so perfect for just getting some powder right into the places that you need it you can also use this for highlighter you can be applying highlighter with it it's just such a great brush to have a brush shape to have the size of it it's excellent and they're super super soft i love the packaging too i love the golden green so that's the number eight brush that's like my top pick from the entire collection that they did it's fabulous and i've been getting so much use out of it so this is one of those rare happy days where i don't have a particular raging active breakout but i'm i'm still just gonna go through and do some specific spot concealing because i had to mention the refer number 23 brush this is this tiniest tiniest little detailer brush and it's completely changed the game for me when it comes to spot concealing i did mention this in a video once before how i do this but this tiny little brush has made spot concealing so easy and i can't believe that i didn't have a brush this size before because it just makes covering up blemishes so simple i never knew i needed a small detailer brush technically you could you you could use like a pointy q-tip you can use your finger i just yeah, this really made an impact in my makeup application. I've really enjoyed having this tiny little detailer brush and the refer packaging, I guess this is the first, or the refer branding, the components, their actual brushes themselves. It's so nice and sleek. They have this version and then they also have a silver version. So there's two different faces of refer, but this little number 23 spot concealing brush, fabulous. Now that we're all concealed, I'm gonna go back in with the Katie Jane Hughes number eight brush and use this to apply my powder just into the center of my face. And yeah, just the shape of it, it's absolutely fabulous. And it's just, yeah, so soft. I love these so much. Number eight was a brilliant, brilliant shape. Next up, let's talk about cream, contour, and bronzer. And this next brush is one of my most favorite brushes of all time. This is the Smith Cosmetics 157 brush. And this completely changed the game for me when it came to my cream contour and cream bronzer specifically. That is just what I use it for personally. But this is kind of a very similar shape to my MAC brush. It's got that really nice like slanted dome shape. It's rounded and it's got an angle. It's absolutely beautiful. It's very, it's actually not as soft as the MAC one. The MAC one definitely feels softer. This one's got a little bit of grit to it. You know, it, you feel it like moving the product around. I don't know. It's just really great. It's really great at what it does. So prior to this, I used the e.l.f. large stipple brush for years and years and years. And that's the one thing I wanted to note based on the quality of the brushes, the type of material that they're using for the bristles, whether it's synthetic or real hair. The e.l.f. large stipple brush, <laughs> Uh, let's see if this one, is this one, oh, you won't be able to see it in the camera. I still have my e.l.f. small stipple brush, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this, but after some time, usually it's pretty quickly, the bristles will start to curl at the tip, and it just stops blending as well. If you take any of your, like, very good quality brushes, like, they just stay straight. They stand up straight. I ran my e.l.f. large stipple brush into the ground and used that one for years. e.l.f. has amazing dupes. So many different brushes available if you're looking for some that are sold at a very affordable price. The e.l.f. small stipple brush I use now for my tanning application which i did a whole video on but yeah we moved on from the elf large stipple brush and we went on to the smith cosmetics 157 and i have a funny little story about this one because i loved it so much you guys know i love to include the products that i use and love in my giveaways and <laughs> Last September, we were starting to chat about the Landmiss giveaways. I think there was a Sephora sale in August and I had been buying a bunch of products and I was just thinking about the giveaways that I wanted to do for Landmiss. And I was looking for the Smith Cosmetics 157 brushes and they were sold out and they've been sold out since. The 157 brush has been sold out forever on Beautylish and also on their website. And I have not been able to... <laughs> get in contact with the brand. I was so desperate, guys. I need to put my email here. It was from September. It has literally been nine months. And I sent the initial email in September being like, hello, please, dear Smith Cosmetics, when are you restocking the 157 brush? They never answered. I resent the email at the end of December being like, hello, why is no one emailing me? Where is your customer service, sweet Smith? And they never responded. I never got an answer back from Smith Cosmetics. The brush has still not been restocked. This exists nowhere. 
And uh, who knows? I, I hope and pray that it is not something that they are discontinuing or getting rid of because it's such a beautiful shape. But I just thought that I would share that little funny with you. I've been so desperately trying to get some to include in giveaways and honestly, even just getting another backup for myself. I love how it, sorry, I have also not been talking about the fact that it beautifully like hugs the cheekbones. It's just a great little brush to have. And I don't like to, I don't like to cross contaminate my brushes. You know, like if I have my MAC 170 brush, that's the one I'm using for foundation. Like I'm using this one for cream contouring and bronzing. And I would love another one for cream blush because it works so beautifully blending out these like creamy liquidy products products. Well, we can't. We can't now, guys. So if anyone else wants to join the email train, we can try. You know, but someday maybe we'll we'll get to know when the 157 brush is coming back in action. And like Refer, it's another Canadian brush brand. Look at Canada go just making all these fabulous brushes. Let's continue on to another Katie Jane Hughes Spectrum brush. This is the number 17 brush. I love this shape so much. It's very unique. I haven't had a brush quite like this shape. I'll mention a Smith Cosmetics one and compare it later, but it's very long. It's not like too uh, splayed out. It's all just kind of one length, which uh, makes it very easy to keep in a straight line. It doesn't like bend around and get all wonky. Like this has been such a game changing brush for me when it comes to applying bronzer and contour to my nose. Like look at how straight that line stays. The brush doesn't bend or wiggle or move around. It's so much easier with this brush in particular to do my nose contour. And I know that's very specific, but if you've been around here on my channel for some time, you'll know how much I struggle with my nose contour. And this has just kind of made it so simple. And this is a brush that I wouldn't just use for this. I've also been taking my cream contour putting it under my lip. And by doing this, it allows me to not forget to <laughs> blend it out under there. And you can also take any kind of product. And this is an excellent lower lash line brush to use. I'm just taking my same cream contour and bronzer and just applying this. It's just so easy. It really holds its shape. I think that's the biggest, the biggest thing. It's been so fabulous and was another favorite shape that came out of the Katie Jane Hughes and Spectrum collection. Let's move on to the bronzer brush. Now I have been exclusively using this brush for my bronzer since I got my hands on it. This is the Refer 05 brush. I have, I have three of these <laughs> and I use them absolutely every day for bronzer. I love bronzer. I pretty much don't go a day without bronzer. If I'm wearing makeup, I'm wearing bronzer. And this is the brush that I've been using for that. It's the perfect medium sized, incredibly soft, fluffy brush. Look at that. Look at the softness on this. It is honestly so beautiful. It really perfectly hugs the area on my cheeks. It's so soft. It really easily blends out the bronzer and it's just been a great brush. I mean, there's so many like, this shape is very common when it comes to brushes, but this one in particular, yeah, it's just incredibly soft. All right, let's talk about highlight. Now I mentioned the Katie Jane Hughes number eight brush, but I wanted to mention a dupe from Real Techniques that has been in my collection for a long time. This is the Real Techniques setting brush. And this is kind of a similar shape. It's a little bit more flat, the Katie Jane Hughes. This one's a little bit more long, a little bit more thin. This one's kind of more flat, like one edge is flat. This one is round. You get the gist. Anyway, setting brush. I don't actually use this. You totally could actually. You could totally use this for powder. I use this brush for highlight. It's just been my go-to lovely little highlighting brush. And I take my highlighter, whoop, bop it on the tops of my cheekbones with it. And it's just beautiful. These ones, if I'm not like too worried about a lot of blending, like the foundation brush, I'm definitely a little bit more picky about highlights. Like you can't go wrong. You can kind of use any brush for highlighting. I love the Real Techniques one. It would be a great dupe for any kind of other brush in this shape. Love it for highlight. Let's pop some on the whoop, collarbone here. Getting summer ready with a Real Technique setting brush, y'all. <laughs> this is this is Mac Whisper of Guilt, guys. Available in my Mac Exolanorama makeup kit. <laughs> Let's have a little chat about blush, guys, because I just need to give an ode and shout out my love for my Bobbi Brown blush brush that it's been with me since the beginning of my YouTube days. This is one of the first brushes that I actually spent like a lot of money on. At the time that I bought this, it was $80 Canadian. I don't know if that's still the same price to this day. Look at the quality. Look at how it has maintained its shape. This blush brush has been with me truly since the beginning of my YouTube days and it's beautiful and it will never leave me. The bristles are still completely straight. Like she is beautiful. This screams quality to me. And I have to say, devastating news. 
the brush is not the same anymore. The Bobbi Brown blush brush, I had ordered it. Oh my God, I ordered it for giveaways as well. And it was completely different. It was like a deep, a deep brown and black. They were more flat. It was more like a paint brush. I actually ended up returning them because I was like, oh, this is not the same brush that I use and love. It was much more flat, kind of like a paddle brush, whereas this one's very like fluffy and soft and light. So it's not the same brush. I wanted to show this brush as an honorable mention because it is in my collection and it will most likely never leave my collection unless something happens to it. But this is one of the oldest brushes in my entire collection and something that has stayed in my brushes forever. But yeah, the Bobbi Brown blush brush as I know it no longer exists like that. So shout out to the OG, <laughs> the OG Bobbi Brown brushes. What I've been using instead has been the Refer 04 brush. But this one's a very classic blush brush shape. It's got that kind of like thin tapered angle to it that really allows you to get right in there and hug the cheekbone just like the other refer brushes it's so soft i have multiples of these and it's been pretty much the only brush brush i can't say that oh my god blush brush can we just call it bb this has been the only bb that i've used since i've had it in my life i really wanted to wear some pink with this is that working like the pink and orange i thought that would be a cute little combo here you're gonna do a a little pink lip look at that talking about brushes and we're doing a nice fresh summer look at the same time love that for us so let's move on to the eyes. I wanna, g <laughs> I'm gonna start with the honorable mentions here. I just have to mention this because I mentioned that the Bobbi Brown blush brush was one of my oldest brushes, but this is actually my oldest brush in my collection. This is the Dellingham Tools <laughs> 778 brush. This was one of the first uh, like PR packages that I ever received like back when I first started YouTube. This is just a flat paddle brush that I use mainly for blending out like an eyeshadow primer or concealer if I'm applying it there or if I'm applying setting powder, if I'm applying some kind of like light eyeshadow all over the lid. I always have some kind of big paddle brush to do that. And that's specifically when I'm doing like eyeshadow looks, which you guys know I don't do very often in my daily life, that's for sure. But I had to give a shout out to this because yeah, it's my oldest brush in my collection. And I've held on to it because I just love a good old classic paddle and it's held its shape and it was great. Um, another little honorable mention here, the MAC 208 brush. This is my really my only eyeliner brush that I use. And ironically enough, this is actually their eyebrow brush. And it's the eyebrow brush because the bristles are a little bit more stiff. Typically eyeliner brushes have a little bit more of movement and they're a little bit more bendy. The bristles are a bit longer usually in your standard classic eyeliner brush. I loved the eyebrow brush because it was short and stubby and stiff. <laughs> you know, really nervous about applying eyeliner and a little bit more shaky. This was kind of a godsend for me, having it hold its shape while I'm using it. So this is the MAC 208 brush. They do still have the 208 brush, but this one also had the bristles updated. It's not the same brush. I, I believe it's actually like a dark brown now. It's not this like lighter yellow bristle, but I had to mention this because this is exclusively the brush I use for eyeliner really. I'll have this as long as it's living and able in my makeup brush lineup. Okay, let's talk about my main biddies here. Oh baby, these two right here. I bought four of these back in the day. I remember making this order and I was so nervous. I spent so much money on buying these four brushes. These are not cheap. Smith Cosmetics, the brushes are expensive. It's absolutely an investment, but it's been so worth it. These ones in particular, these, this was my first purchase from Smith Cosmetics and I have had them since these, I still have the original four. So I have the 232 and the 230 brush. And if I could tell you to buy any eyeshadow brushes in the world, it would be these two. These pretty much get me through most of my eyeshadow needs. So the 232 is the larger blending brush. The 230 is the smaller version. They're the same shape. One's just smaller, one is larger. And these are so fluffy. They're so soft, but they've got good grip and they're the best blending brushes I've ever used. I'm gonna start with the 232 brush. I'm just gonna take a shadow and blend this out into my crease. This is pretty much what I use this for. On a daily basis, when I'm doing my everyday makeup, I always put my bronzer in my crease and this is the brush I use for that. It's soft, it doesn't scratch at the eyes. Some of the bigger blending brushes can be really scratchy and it's annoying and it's unfortunate to use this one. Like it's just, it's a blending dream. I could not 
recommend this brush to you more. So beautiful. Then the 232 is just the smaller version of that. So I, for myself, when I use this, I often use this if I'm doing a deeper shade, if I'm wanting to focus something more in the crease, but I still want it to have that really soft blend. Like these are the soft, fluffy blending brushes. This is if you really want a smoky effect. There's other eyeshadow brushes that I'll get to that really do the packing the pigment on, but if you like light washes of smoky shadow on your eyes, these are the brushes that I use. This one's also great for your lower lash line. And this is what I use, like sometimes I'll apply a product if I really wanna pack on the pigment and then if I wanna blend it out, I'll use this one to blend out in that area. It's just a smaller version of the bigger one and it's nice to have two shapes when you're mixing and blending around. So speaking of packing on the lower lash line, refer number 12 brush, this guy right here. This is what I use for that. If I am packing product into like my crease or if I'm packing it onto my lower lash line, I actually sometimes use this for concealer as well if I have larger spots, but this is the brush I use for that. I love to have these like shorter domed brushes. They're really stiff. So I like to use that if I'm wanting like a lot of color packed onto the lower lash line. Let's move on to the MAC 217 brush. The classic, oh, this is such an old, old gal, sweet soul, has seen so much life with me. The good old classic MAC 217, the one brush that if you watched YouTube like five to 10 years ago, everyone would have told you, what brush do you need? You need a MAC 217. And this is another brush that they did redo. They, re, they changed out the bristles on the brush and it is no longer the same, very much that more stiff, flat paddle brush. It does not have the same softness and fluffiness as the OG 217. So I would no longer recommend the MAC 217. I wanted to say that the Refer 01 brush is an exact shape and brush dupe for the OG 217. You can see it's completely the same shape. And this is a blending brush, like these Smith Cosmetics ones, I use in my crease, larger surface areas. If I'm wanting to softly blend a shadow all over my eyelid, and blend it into the crease, then I go for something like this. So I'm gonna take that brown with this brush and just really softly pop it all over the eyelid. And it just, because it's it's like, it's like just as fluffy as the blending brushes, but then it has a slightly more flat edge so you can really, like you can be packing and blending it onto the lid at the same time. It just makes applying a shadow onto the lid so much easier. And yeah, this is such a classic, how many times have I said that word in this video? Oh my God. But yeah, this is a shape I'll never be without. A good old classic MAC 239. This is your flat packing, flat shader brush, kind of whatever you want to call it. Another version that I haven't used is the Refer 02 brush. Pretty much like Refer has a brush for absolutely everything I need. <laughs> but these are the two flat little paddle shader brushes that I have. And more so recently, I've been using this style of brush so much to blend out my eyeliners. And I definitely have a few videos where I've done this where I apply a liner to my lash line and then I'll just continue blending it out with this flat shader brush. Like this has become a very, very versatile and much more used eyeshadow brush than I could have ever imagined in my collection. You can use these paddle brushes to apply some pigments if you want a shadow to be more like thickly and densely applied onto the lid. Like this is your this is your pack and your pack and shader brush so if you really want to amp up the pigment when you're applying your shadow i would use a shader brush to just really precisely pack this onto the lid so i always have one of these on hand no matter what and then again lately i've been really using these to blend out liner and it's, it's a must-have in my my brush lineup for sure i'm gonna go back into that little short domed shadow brush one thing i forgot to mention i use this for my inner corner highlight do my brow bone highlight and also my inner corner highlight this is my eyeshadow brush lineup. When I'm wanting to create any eyeshadow looks, this is the, the lineup that I pack and use, and these are my favorites. I'm gonna apply some lip liner. Ooh. And I did a little shopping my stash moment, guys. I'm gonna use Lisa Eldridge, love of my life lipstick. Shout out to the lip declutter for making me use my lip products. Some mascara, Bite Beauty Upswing. And the final brush that I wanted to mention to you is actually my lip brush. This is the Real Techniques Detailer Brush, and this is something that I simply can't live without. I love bold lip colors, but I find, like, unless you have a really good doe foot applicator, I'm incapable of, like, staying properly in my lip shape. I always, almost, almost always apply a bold lipstick with a lip brush. I will take my lipstick, if it's a bright, bold, very pigmented color, I apply it to the center of my lips like this, and I have to go in and follow my lip shape with a lip brush. I can't do it 
with a bullet lipstick. Like I need a lip brush. This detailer brush has been with me for a very long time from Real Techniques. It's a fabulous brush. And this is something that I just need in my makeup collection. When it comes to bold lipsticks, I need a lip brush. And this is the one that I keep on hand. So my friends, these are my brushes. These are my top makeup brushes, the brushes that I have on hand every day when I'm applying my makeup, when I'm traveling, these are the brushes that I use. Here's a few of my favorites. They make applying makeup so much easier and some of these I've had for years and years and years. <laughs> so those are my top picks. Those are my favorite brushes. My everyday brushes I keep in these little old plant pots. These are plant pots from Calgary. I've had these since my university days. They used to hold some succulents <laughs> and now they carry my everyday makeup brushes. So I keep my everyday ones in there and then the studio brushes, the rest of my collection I keep in the Katie Jane Hughes, the little holder that came with the set. Absolutely beautiful. I got a lot of brushes guys. Honestly, there's so many, but I truly, I can't stress enough. These are the ones that I use. So those are my top brush picks guys. I hope that this was helpful for you. For those of you who have been inquiring and wondering about what my top picks were when it comes to makeup brushes, I hope this was helpful and I hope you enjoyed this video. And thanks so much for watching. Thanks for being here guys. I'll see you all very soon for a new Everyday May video. Bye!